Hello, I'm Debbie Bell Hosking and sitting with me is Lee Fulmer and we're chatting about six years on from the Bitcoin, where are we now? And Lee, it was all about cryptocurrencies, now it's about crypto technology. What is the difference? So I think uh, the, the simplest way to explain the difference is that cryptocurrencies are actually just a packaging and an application of crypto technologies. So crypto technologies predate cryptocurrencies really. Um, what we've seen in the last decade is a big shift in technology that has enabled universal access through the internet, uh, in huge increases in computing power. You know, we have devices now that we carry in our pockets that are more powerful than even the computers were five, six years ago. Um, and the pervasiveness of cryptography and security algorithms that are facilitated by that power. So those three things kind of coming together into a perfect storm are what enabled cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies was really just, if you like, the first application of crypto technologies being packaged together. Um, and it's probably the most famous one. But I think for the last 12 to 18 months, there's been a lot more focus on the crypto technology aspect than the cryptocurrency aspect, because it, there's a general perception cryptocurrencies have stalled. Um, that there's a legitimacy and a regulation that's lacking in the industry at the moment that means their take up has just not reached the penetration people predicted four, five, six years ago. Um, whereas the underlying technology that's used to deploy it, the blockchain for instance, um, has lots of different applications in other areas such as asset registry or application stack or asset centric transactions. So in a sense, crypto technologies was the underlying infrastructure for cryptocurrencies. Are there any other applications that would be more useful for banks? Um, I think there are. I think, and that's that's the change that we're seeing happening now. You know, two years ago, people were still getting Bitcoin to all the conferences to talk about cryptocurrencies. And the last two years has been quite a shift, particularly in banking, where people are now talking about crypto technologies rather than cryptocurrencies because they're looking at other ways to use those technologies. Um, and the EBA recently has actually done some research into crypto technologies and their applications. And they've broken down into sort of four different categories. And cryptocurrencies is one, and it's the one that everybody knows the most about. Um, but we also have three others. We've got asset register, we've got application stack, and we've got asset centric. Uh, and they all have different ways that they leverage the underlying technology of blockchain and crypto technologies to help financial transactions in one way, shape, or form. So would crypto technologies uh, being used for asset registries, for example, be of more use to people? I think definitely. I mean, if you look at the research, um, asset registry is probably the most powerful of the four applications that the, the EBA research has classified. And I think the reason for that is, is it, it really empowers individuals, right? So uh, the, the best example I can think of that's relevant to everybody who could be watching this is car ownership, right? So. A manufacturer makes a car, they ship it to a dealer, the dealer sells it to you, you own it for a number of years, and then you sell it on to me. Now, you have a piece of paper from some government regulator that tells you you are the owner of that car, but that piece of paper can be forged. So myself as the purchaser, buying the car from you, I'm handing over a lot of money and I'm taking an asset that I don't actually know is yours. And until I get my paperwork back from the relevant government regulator, I won't know for sure whether that car is legitimate or stolen or cloned or anything. If we take the idea of crypto technologies and we apply it to that, if we take that title document for that car and we virtualize it in the chain, so the chain starts with the manufacturer and then the dealer and then you, and all three of you sign that chain and you can see that document in there. You can see the provenance of the vehicle. And then when I take it from you and we exchange our keys, I become the owner in the transaction. And even the original manufacturer can still see that. And that is actually quite beneficial to the manufacturer because they know where their cars are going. It's beneficial to me because I know that you aren't trying to con me out of anything. Um, it's beneficial to you because if it turns out that I have an accident with my car and I run away from the scene, everybody can see in the chain that you were not the legal owner when that accident took place. So I think it has really far-reaching implications for assets of all type in everyday life by establishing provenance. Um, but I think the challenge with it is that to do that, we are talking about onboarding so many different organizations, regulatory bodies and individuals, that it really is not going to be feasible probably in the next 10 to 15 years, unless you're looking at a, a very high-tech closed economy in some place like Singapore, where everything is already online, so that jump would be easier to make. What about application stack where technology companies are involved? 
What sort of products and infrastructures do you see coming out of there, this space? So I think that's an interesting one because you've seen a lot of companies, startup companies, play in this space. Um, and it's been a big thing in the last year in particular. And you know, Ethereum is probably the one everybody talks about, but there's a half a dozen others. I think what's started to happen now is that you've got the big tech companies getting involved, right? They're looking at this as a way to try and build their next business model. Right, so it, I'm, I, without naming names, you know, you can look at any of the big top tech companies in the world and see that at various points they've struggled to switch from hardware to software, software to services, or services to service on demand to the cloud. And the more forward thinking ones are looking at this now and they're thinking actually this is something we would like to be building the tools for so that we are enabling the change and therefore we are the underlying infrastructure for that change. Um, and the banks themselves are doing this. I mean, a search of the patent office in the US will turn up a dozen different banks that have all filed patents recently on crypto technologies and blockchain. So the banks themselves are trying to figure out how to build it. Um, I think that's a bad idea because the reality is, is that if banks build it and it becomes proprietary, then you won't get the penetration. Um, so we do need the big tech giants to get involved here. And I think they are starting to work up to that and unlike with the asset register piece, we're probably looking at a much shorter time frame. I know that there's uh, you know, two companies in particular that are looking at setting up divisions specifically to deal with crypto technologies. Um, and I think that will give us the leap that we need in the next 12 to 18 months. So what about crypto technology in the asset centrics context? Um, in one way, I suppose that's a hybrid of your asset uh, registries and your application stack. So. How does that all work? Well, it, it's an interesting one because I think um, th this is one part where I really do agree with the research the EBA has been looking at. It's probably the thing that is going to come to market the quickest other than currencies, which have stagnated, I think, due to a lack of legitimacy in, in the public mind. Whether it's perceived or not is irrelevant. It, it's, it's stymieing their adoption at the moment. Um, I think with the asset-centric piece, what we're looking at is instead of an individual asset, like the car example in the asset register, we're looking at complicated transactions that involve multiple parties and multiple assets changing hands. Um, it's typically the sort of thing that people talk about when they talk about trade finance or financial supply chain. Um, but it is the area that I think in financial institutions in general, whether it's market infrastructures like the EBA, whether it's large clearing banks, um, you see a consistent problem with too much paper and too long for these transactions to complete. And although the industry has tried to deal with it by doing things like introducing common document management systems that they can share um, or other infrastructure services on top of things like SWIFT or the DTCC or the EBA, um, the problem is that they're not actually tackling the root of the transaction. So again, if we look at crypto technologies, if we look at the fact that you know, a large manufacturer who makes a laundry soap, right, wants to do a special promotion and they contract a design house to do a new package and the design house contracts a packaging firm who contracts a manufacturer in another country, you've got four parties there. Plus, you've probably got shipping, you've got the local customs authorities. So you could have six to eight parties in that transaction. And right now, they're all dealing with proprietary systems through different banks. If we apply blockchain and crypto technologies to that problem, we can speed it up and simplify it because everybody would have the same provenance of the transaction that they did in the example of the car, right? So when the manufacturer actually manufactures and hands over the packaging to the shipper, everybody in the chain can see that and those two people can sign off that piece of the transaction with their key. When the shipper actually delivers it into the customs port, mm -hmm. you know, the, the relevant customs authority can also look at that shipment and exchange that key with potentially the actual end user who needs to pay import duties, right? Um, you could actually sign off each part of that transaction separately, but you could also sign it off collaboratively all at once so that the banks can then move all the money at the same time. So I think it's got huge applications and again, if we combine the two aspects of asset registry with application stack, which is what we're talking about, um, the big tech giants can help that move forward very quickly. And Lee, on that note about the future, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you. And thank you for watching.